The beach is that way! Let's go! You have a reputation, Captain Kirk. I have a reputation? We will not fit. We'll fit! We'll fit! Two, one. You coming with me or not? Hello, I'm the Universal Critic. I talk about whatever I want, whenever I want. Today I'm reviewing Star Trek Into Darkness, the highly anticipated follow-up to J.J. Abrams' 2009 reboot of the film series. And in my opinion, it's even better than the first. First, I should probably talk about what everyone else has talked about, the villain, played by Benedict Cumberbatch. I know a lot of people complain that Eric Bana as the villain in the first film was pretty weak, but this film thankfully doesn't have that problem. To avoid spoilers, I won't refer to the villain by his character name, but I will explain some of his backstory, so mild spoilers ahead. First of all, this is the first thing I've ever seen Benedict Cumberbatch do, and he is a very, very good actor. While it is strange that this version of, the vil of this villain is much younger, wider, and more British than the original, weird, Cumberbatch's performance more than compensates for that. Whereas the original version of this character was passionate, bold, and theatrical, Cumberbatch plays him more reserved, slow, and calculating, while still showing showing signs of the repressed anger and even sadness at points. Yes, this incarnation of this character actually manages to be fairly sympathetic, with him being betrayed as someone who was part of a manipulative scheme and is now suffering the consequences. As for the rest of the cast, they do a really good job, and some actually are allowed to show... some are actually able to develop their iconic roles even more than in the last movie. Chris Pine as Kirk is shown to be idealistic in addition to being the smug, aggressive womanizer we all know and love. Zachary Quinto as Spock does an excellent job and for once is able to show emotion, as we get to see him explain just how Vulcans are able to repress their emotions and the consequences of doing so. In addition, they develop his romance with Zoe Saldana Zuhura. Both seriously, the two discuss Spock's detached nature and how it affects their relationship, and just once for laughs, a lover spat with a Vulcan. Yeah, it's pretty hilarious. Carl Urban as Bones does a good job conveying that roguish southern charm, while still showing off his advanced medical skills, which is very important. John Cho Sulu is able to convey himself as a rookie with a lot of potential, but who doesn't quite realize that. And that story arc does get some nice payoff in this film, but I won't spoil it for you. Anton Yelchin as Chekhov is also given much more to do, showing off his engineering skills, even though he's never really displayed anything like that before. But still it works, and yes, he does say Wessels. Keep the fanboys happy. Speaking of engineering, Simon Pegg as Scotty is still hilarious, needless to say, it's Simon Pegg. And the character manages to go beyond saying, I don't have the power, Captain, and he is actually given some serious scenes to work with, which he handles rather well. A few side characters I should mention are Dr. Carol Marcus, whose fan, who fans should remember as Kirk's future ex-wife. Not, not much to say about her in this film, except she is British now for some reason. Weird. Speaking of British people, Noel Clark is in this movie, better known as Mickey from Doctor Who. He has a bit role in this movie, and despite having a little screen time, Manages to deliver some fairly powerful dramatic moments, but I won't spoil them for you. Now on to the actual story. This film is unique in that it shows us much more of the Earth than any of the previous films. This is especially interesting in that what we see, it allows us to see the changes the events of the last film had on the Federation. This society seems to be more grey and materialistic than, I mean militaristic, in the past. And the destruction of Vulcan is cited as a, as a motive for this shift in... in in sh this change. This helps to establish the fact that this new series of films is trying to differentiate itself from the original films, which is certainly a wise move. Now on to what is probably the most controversial part of this film, the ending. And I can see why many people have a f take fault with it, but I don't, per necessarily. I'm going to try and keep this as spoiler-free as possible. Let's just say that the ending of this film is very similar to one of the other films, I won't specify which one. 
And it does, I admit it would seem a little out of place considering these films are supposed to be heading in a new direction. I don't think it's a problem though, as I felt it helped to mesh the old with the new. You know, keeping the memories alive while still moving forward. That's all I can really say without giving spoilers. So overall, Star Trek Into Darkness is a more than worthy follow-up to its predecessor, and serves as a good omen for the future of this franchise. I'm the Universal Critic, I talk about whatever I want, whenever I want, goodbye.